Welcome to Saints on Cinema. I'm Tim Wilde, and with me again is Zach Marsh. Thanks for coming and for being here, existing. For hey, your guys. <laughs> thanks, thanks for allowing me to exist in, <laughs> in the world of yeah. Saints on YouTube. Um, tonight we're continuing our, continuing our discussions of the Cobra Kai Season 2, series Season 2. And tonight we're doing Episodes 7 and 8, which are a lull. Hold on, before... Before we get into that, we should say there's announcement. Uh, season three is happening. Yes, I talked to Josh today, and it's going to be on YouTube. A new, it was in, as I understood, it was under negotiations who was going to pick up the, the title to do the next season. Um, I don't know who all was involved, possibly Netflix or Hulu, whoever, but as original content, someone else to do it. But yes, YouTube's continuing on because YouTube already canceled YouTube Red, so now that's why we're now on with YouTube uh, premiere, premium. premium, yeah. And uh, as YouTube originals, but I think everything else kind of got canceled. Axe. Except for got axed, but Cobra Kai is tearing it up, doing really good, so. Well, that's exciting. Yep. And we're the ones talking about it the most, so that's cool for us, but, but we love it. That's why we're talking about it, we love Cobra Kai. We love Karate Kid. You know, by the way, I just want to mention this. Last season, I noticed, I mentioned in one of our discussions, Last year when you were watching the episodes, if you pause the episode on YouTube, the the little cursor that I did. That's right. Cursor bar. It was a little guy in a crane kick. Doing the crane kick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was so cool. And when you pause it, a little hand would come out and go wax on. Wax on, wax off, yeah. <laughs> gonna go wax off. I thought like, that is so cool. And they didn't do it this year. Uh, I, I didn't even think it. about that. Yeah. <laughs> I went back to look at the uh, episodes from last year to see if it was on those still, for some, however that works. No, they're, it's gone. But I just it was cool. I wish I had recorded my computer me playing with that. Because that was that. freaking awesome. It was. That was pretty cool. I remember that. Yeah, so that, that's a note for uh, for YouTube. And I've never seen YouTube do something like that. I, I mean, I'm, I don't know. But um, yeah, I've never seen YouTube. They're owned by Google, who does little tricks on the Google yeah. website all the time, right? Yeah. So, they, they whatever the little thing. The anniversary of stuff. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was like, Google does cool stuff like that all the time. Maybe down the road, YouTube will get a little more. Anyway, that's, that's our little uh, prologue going into today's uh, episodes, um, which is appropriate because today's episode, the first episode is lull. And we just took a little lull right there from our content here. Um, Sorry, I, I digress. No, you're, I started. I was talking about this stupid crane kick cursor but anyway okay um so well this is uh so we're starting to get things into motion we talked about um before going into these episodes um there was a lot of setup and then people were starting to see where people are coming from and kind of where angles are kind of being hinted at now things go into motion and people start making being proactive like we were talking about miguel last time um by the way just want to say for those who have watched all these episodes or enjoying the discussions thank you and hope you continue to enjoy them um, um, share them, comment below, whatever. But we we love hearing from you. We had we had some fun interactions from last year's episodes. Um, but just if, if I know I haven't been um, promoted yet, but um, if you have things to say or thoughts about it, definitely uh, share them in the comments below because we 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 pay attention and love that. But anyway, lol. The the end of the last episode, we started to see that John Kreese was. Um, you were starting to see he's working Miguel a little bit, and he said, we're going to fix Johnny, and then Johnny was off with his buddies, and uh, and uh, Bobby died. It's Bobby, right? It's Bobby. Or Tom. No, Bobby. Yeah. Or Tom. Whichever one died. And uh, now he comes back, and this wasn't the reunion. He had been gone to the funeral and came back, and Miguel says, sorry about the lot, your loss and everything. But he goes into the office. That was here, right? Yeah. He goes into the office and uh, Kreese has set, kind of set up shop. And I didn't pay attention really to what the shop or what the office looked like before with Johnny. But now Kreese is in there. He has everything filed, clipboards on the back. And then he has his uh, army um, photo, the black and white photo in the back there, which is very interesting. And I'll talk about that later. But Johnny was looking at that. He's like, oh, you're moving in. This is where we start to see Kreese kind of inching his way to take over the dojo. This is kind of the first steps he's done, other than just being back in black or in the geek. Um, I thought um, it was cool. The first scene in this episode, before that happens, you see him also stepping into Miyagi's dojo. So he's kind of spreading out. And he, the first so opening sequence is Kreese 
in the or training in the backyard at Miyagi's house. Daniel goes back there thinking it's uh, Robbie, and he goes and he sees it's Crease, and that has that uh, that's the music kind of switch, and you're like, oh, and then you think there's a confrontation, and it's to me that moment was almost as uh, scary, not scary, but you know, kind of like ooh, I got chills a little bit, like in Karate Kid Three when uh, Barnes came into the backyard. Because that's like, that's uh, vandalism, but that's trespassing, and that's like, they're breaking into your home turf, you know? Right. A little bit more than just like, if we meet in the streets, or I went to your dojo, or at school together, whatever it is. This is like, okay, this is my backyard, it's tranquil, I'm training, or I live here, whatever, it's my property, I should be safe. And then there's that that uh, feeling vandalized, where, and, and um, or, you know, and, that, and that's a very real thing, especially in the world. Uh, where you feel vandalized, where he breaks in there, you're not safe. That reminded me of that moment. But Kreese comes out and he basically he says, you know, I want to thank you for taking or picking off the weak soldiers of the army. And then Daniel's like, this is not a war. And then Kreese makes a very interesting comment. What were you going to say? Uh, uh, keep, keep going. What's your insight? Yeah. Well, Kreese is like, he's like, uh, he's like, John, or Daniel's like, this isn't a war. These aren't soldiers. These are kids. He's like, no, this is a war. He said, P he said, peace. He wrote it down here. Oh, he said, the war never ends. Peace is the lull between battles. And I think that's really interesting because I really felt like at the beginning of Karate Kid 3, he felt defeated and he was done. He went to Terry Silver to say, I'm leaving, possibly to go commit suicide. But he was like, I'm done, I'm over it. And now, and he wasn't like in a lull, like I'm gonna be back or whatever. And then all this time he's been, you know, in the halfway house or whatever, where he's been you know, on the streets all these years until he came back to Cobra Kai. I didn't feel like he was like like things were stirring and he was like conniving and planning or anticipating coming back. I think this is just a mentality that kicked back in once he got back into action. I think once he started feel you know, got back in the gi, watched the students, had that energy and that that power again and started to see that um, that influence he had on them, it brought back a lot of those feelings and he's like where well, he does feel like a war. But what I like about this is his thinking about this being a war between Daniel and Johnny and him, that it's not just that. I think originally when he was training the Cobra Kai students before Daniel even moved in, that's how he felt. He felt this is these are my students, and we see that throughout this episode. These are my students, and this is uh, I'm preparing them for war, and they are going to bind bond together, just like you said in the last episode. You know, it, it's all of you. You're all in it for, for the good or the bad, no matter what happens. You guys are Cobra Kai, and Cobra Kai never dies. It's you guys are force. And that he thinks of himself as their their teacher and their sensei, which he is, and that never stops. And that's what he's going to, you know, discuss with, uh, or he, he said that to Johnny. But uh, I don't know. I, I like that as, as for him as a villain, and Marco pulls it off really well. But I love, I love that. That, that that thought in there that we've never really, you know, he's never expressed that before. It's just like a war, but when there's peace, that's just that's just build up for the next battle. I thought that was kind of... So I, I think that's right. I think that says a lot about Kreese's character in this season. He is a villain, but he's not the villain of this season. No, yes. He's the villain of the third season. And the second season, to, I'm going to give credit to the writers on this because... I, I didn't realize this watching it through the first time, but going through the episodes, the entire his entire role in the second season is to pair him to be the third season villain, which is pretty cool. That's a pretty cool setup. Um, and and uh, so and I think there's multiple levels to what you're saying. I mean, we're talking about not just a war between the two dojos, but also a war on. John Kreese's life versus the new world, like millennials and things like that, which Johnny is kind of fighting too. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, this is a war. Cause I mean, he doesn't put up with the little pieces of crap kids um, that he, well, he, that he considers pieces of crap, I should say. Right. Uh, I, I'm not saying <laughs> they are actually pieces of crap, but, um, yeah. but the little millennials who are like, same with Johnny is like, uh, no more, asthma and peanut allergies, peanut allergies do not in this dojo <laughs> my parents think i'm on the spectrum well get off it pronto <laughs> right? yeah. like um you know it there's that. yeah um 
And at the same time, they, what they're teaching is helping these kids gain more confidence and be more successful in their lives to an extent. So he, they're not totally wrong. Right. And then, and we'll, and we'll, we'll let's come back to that at the end of the episode when Johnny comes back and he addresses that exactly. Um, but but I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, awesome setup for Kreese as the villain. I, I think you're absolutely right in the next season. And that's where the, 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 the lines were drawn at the end of this season, just like they started at the last season. And Kreese picks his battles very carefully in this second season. He's He knows when to back off from Johnny, and he knows when to push Johnny. The, it's, the show is very clear about that, when he shuts his mouth and lets Johnny do his thing, and then the times when he steps in and goes, maybe you should do this. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyways, I, I think like, this is good. Yeah, like I compared him before, this is Senator Palpatine manipulating Anakin. This, this season is kind of like during the Clone Wars where he's just kind of maneuvering his pieces ready for the strike. And that's where he's going to be dominant in the you know in the Galactic Civil War. Right. Right now, this is all set up and he's just pawning everyone around and feeling everyone out and getting everything set up for his moment, just like in the, the prequels. I'm even wondering if, because he doesn't visit um, Daniel under uh, Johnny or for, uh, under uh, direction of Johnny. No. I, I'm almost wondering if he's getting the kids to pick fights with each other as a way to get them to escalate it so he can slip in. <laughs> I don't know. We know he was behind the the, the uh, vandalizing the dojo. He uh, he was aware of it. And he was, I don't know if he sent... I, mean, I don't think he did at all send Hawk to do it with his friends, but he definitely was on board with it when Hawk talked to him. Right? He talked to him afterwards. Hawk told Priest after or did they talk told him to go all in i don't know if he explicitly told him to trash it but he knew exactly what was ha he knew who oh. did it. yeah because hawk came up to him when they were being disciplined and said i think i should say something he said no don't i'll take care of it right yeah anyway he uh he turns around and he addresses the picture and he says you know a buddy of mine mine took that photo very speculative that that's terry silver you know they were old war buddies and everything. yeah a lot more meaning to that picture later, especially with what happens later in the show. Did we ever look up if Terry Silver is still alive? Because, man, I want him in the next season. In real life? Yeah, he is. He is? Okay. Yeah, he's a young kid. What do you mean? He's a young man. Um, but things happen, <laughs> you know? You never know. Yeah. All right. Then during this lull, I love the name of the episodes as always, but lull is, is kind of a lull in the, uh, in the, in the overall story. We're going to take a step back. Nyagi's going to train his students and... Um, Kreese is going to, and Johnny going to train their students, but really it's Kreese that's maneuvering the training. Um, Kreese is going to take them up to what cove? Or Creek? Can, or Coyote Creek. Coyote Creek. <laughs> Which was a really cool sequence. And I think it's cool because we saw that there was other outside training besides just the standard um, just dojo training in that you dojo. Do. This is pretty standard. They do retreats in karate studios all over. Change of scenery. Plus, you just feel really cool going up in the mountains and training in nature for some reason. You feel right. Like I know you, you've you expressed uh, you enjoy being out under like pine trees and just in the in the in the in nature when you're when you're training or doing katas yeah. or whatever. Yep. It's a different feel for it. I remember used to used to or being a kid playing karate, <laughs> <laughs> sword fighting with sticks and stuff like that. It was a lot more adventurous, like outside in the hills uh, where I live. There's a lot of uh, a lot of mountains and rivers and stuff. But anyway. I did do sparring once on a 10-foot drop up in the mountains, on the edge of a 10-foot drop. Really? Uh, the rule was your opponent could not fall off, so you did have to be careful. But um, that was a rule. <laughs> that, that was a rule. All right, Coyote Creek. So um, Johnny comes back and he's and the, he's like, oh, we're going to do our training. And then Kreese is like, oh, or Gary has something planned. And apparently Kreese was going to take them off to do this without Johnny's consent. Because Johnny right. comes back and says, okay, I, I got a class to teach. He said, and then the kids are like, oh, I thought we had we were going somewhere. And that's when Kreese reveals that they're going to go to Creek. And he's like, I don't think they're ready for that. And now the audience is like, ooh, what's going to happen? And then they go up. And it wasn't that crazy extreme nothing worse than what johnny's already doing in the dojo so i thought it was a little it was a little overreaction for him but it wasn't a big deal they go up there and i guess they line up into two teams red versus black and then um they're paired off hawk and demi or not dimitri but hawk and miguel we know are the two um, dominant students and so they're separated which is good and we know hawk is wearing the medallion or the medal of honor that he stole from 
Um, Which Miyagi is the one. dumbest thing he could possibly be doing, by the way. That, yeah. that is so dumb. Yeah. For the character, whatever. That's his little like, you know. His I don't know how to describe it. Um, but that that's his his. I don't know what to say. It's not a badge of honor. It's uh, that's his trophy. Because you can say that. Um, anyway, we got up to. Um, they get up there. They're separated in their teams. Red versus black. Miguel is on the black team, and um, Hawk is on on the red team. And then uh, um, Chubby comes up. Stingray, her favorite guy, comes up now, and he comes up. He's talking about how he's uh, he's late, he's you know, traffic or whatever, red lights, and he comes up. He has this like his pointed goatee yeah, now, with the... <laughs> colored, and um, and he says he says he flipped the strip. Uh, excuse me, flipped the script. And he says just Hawk style, which is what you know how Hawk came back with the Mohawk and changed right. his image. And he's trying to describe why he's called Stingray. He's trying to be all cool about it. And then uh, and um, Johnny's like, yeah, whatever, Chubby. <laughs> he's on, he's on your team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is awesome for what happens later. But he just ignores it. Like, you can't just name yourself something cool. He gave Hawk the name Hawk. Remember, that was Johnny who did that. Right. Anyway, um, so he goes on. They start the contest. It goes back and forth with Miyagi-Do. We'll go back to there. Um, so while they're running around, they basically split up and they're just trying to go one-on-one -on -one and there are no rules except for, I mean, I don't think they're setting the rules, just don't kill the other guy, but you just got to get the bandana of the other per other team as, much, as uh, however, however you can, you know, no rules. And Miguel is kind of stalking around watching Hawk and Hawk is kind of taking on most of the red team, it seems like. It doesn't show all the fights at all. No, um, not, not even close. In fact, when they're like, oh, there's only two left, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, but, but that's okay. Um, so then it comes down to um, Hawk showing that he has the, the Medal of Honor, and that pisses off Miguel, and then they have their little showdown. They have a cool little fight, and then um, Hawk... This is loses. another one in retrospect. I think they're setting this up for the Season 3 conflict. I thought it was going to be Season 2 conflict, but I think I think it's gonna, Miguel versus Hawk will be a thing in Season 3, because I think Miguel... Assuming he's not recovering the whole season, and he better not, um, I think they're, if they're leading up to the next year's tournament, um, Miguel will be with Johnny doing whatever karate they're doing, and Cobra Kai will show up with Hawk, and Miyagi-Do will show up with Robbie. It'd be very interesting. It'd be kind of like a, um, kind of like Magneto and Professor X separate, where one's like, hey, be good it was like no i'm gonna i'm too far gone kind of a thing maybe that's a bad example but i yeah i think that'd be <laughs> enough for the next one anyway they have their fight miguel wins takes the bandana takes the badge goes back and is like oh black one but they don't realize that stingray's not there <laughs> he darts up out of the grass or out of the uh yeah a bunch of leaves probably me so like, great so great yeah and he's like that's why stingrays they hide and whatever and they, <laughs> he's expected he gets his victory, and then it's what's awesome there is he turns and Crease is smiling. Yeah. Crease smiles as a kid, and he says, he calls him Stingray. And I'm like, there you go. You won your name. Good uh, job. This, and this is totally foreshadowing, too, right? That Crease is going to win, uh, at least for this season, that he wins. Uh, from as a, as a uh, surprise attack. Yes, yes. It's total foreshadowing, which is fun. Yeah. It's really good. But, you know, it just makes you love Stingray. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> He's proud of that victory and it comes up again later. But anyway, that's the Cobra Kai training. You have a little bit of tension between Miguel and um, and Hawk. And it's it's just kind of setting up, I think, more of what's going to happen later. But Miguel did retrieve the badge. Didn't No one knows. You know, Chris and Johnny, no one really figured it out. But whatever. They just kind of move on with it. There's a good sequence. Um, the other thing I like about Ray, or I wrote this down, um, Stingray. He has a, a, a G.I. Joe cobra logo the cobra the enemy um <laughs> badge on his on the back of his his uh his vest yeah first. that's right it's pretty cool anyway that's that's appropriate but do you see that if you didn't realize that's gi joe cobra that's that's cobra from gi joe not cobra kai anyway who are the bad guys and he's so he's openly being like i want to be a bad guy but. yeah but that's a cool that's a cool 80s he's an older Reference. kid yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's awesome Anyway. An older kid. He's in a he's a man child. Is what he <laughs> he's, my, he's our age. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm a kid. 
Okay, I'm saying you're talking about stupid karate kid stuff. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, look at our walls. So <laughs> I, I, I don't think we can say a lot. <laughs> I don't have a G.I. Joe wall set up, but I definitely have a huge collection. I could shame this and my G.I. Joe stuff. Anyway, <laughs> not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> uh. Okay, Miyagi Do. So let's watch Swift. But that's pretty much all that happens with Cobra Kai. Um, I can't think of anything else to really. There's some good lines and stuff, and the, the fighting's kind of cool, but that's all that was all about. Um, Miyagi Do. So now we have Miyagi Do, and the, the cool thing about this scene is that, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of um, reminds me of a lot of other um, shows that did kind of similar things where Daniel has come, is coming out to the students. Not coming out to the students, but you know what I mean. Daniel is approaching his students, but the thing about Daniel now is that he heard. John Kreese say this is a war. He's preparing his students to fight and he called his students warriors. He goes in as he approaches the lawn. I didn't catch this the first time. As he approaches the lawn where they're sitting there just gathered and talking, he's like, what have I gotten them into? And I think the weight of what's actually happening and that this is this might be getting out of control is starting to hit him. Now he's not to the point where he's like, I'm gonna pull back and be like, okay, we need to defuse the situation. That's what he should have done at that point. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's got to, he's, he has the mentality, he's got to prepare them for war. And he starts, he tells that to his wife, um, which happens in this episode. So what he does, he says, what have I gotten them into? And he says, what is it called? I don't know if you're familiar with this. Shock to Giko, Giko, Geico. I, I am not familiar with that term. No. Okay. And then, the, you know, Dimitri's like, like the, like the insurance commercials or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about anticipating your enemies. Um, that was a big deal with Dimitri in this episode. He has them gather around. I remember doing this in football when I was in Little League. I wasn't a big football player, but I Little League, I played football. And you have one person with the ball in the middle, and then he, and the, the coach, would have, everyone was in a circle around him, and you're just kind of looking around, and he would just call out for people to come and try and hit you and tap you. You just have to, to block and defend them. I hated it. It was a horrible exercise, and I just got just thrown down because I was a little kid on the team. Anyway, because I'm playing with kids like two or three years older than me. If, um, if you don't naturally have anticipation, you, you have to beat it into people. And I don't mean literally beat the crap out of them, but yeah. brute force experience is the best way to learn anticipation. Yeah. It's a, it's, yeah, I'm not just in the exercise. Yeah. I just, I hated it. And I, so I understand what Dimitri yeah. from. Um, so they get in there, they're doing that outside. It's like a hundred degrees. It's like, they're like, it's like, it's so hot out here. And it reminds me of the scene in the sand lot where they're all like, Benny, we can't play baseball. It's a million degrees out here. And he was like, yeah. all right, women about it. <laughs> And Daniel's like, he's, and this is important, Daniel's like, you know, it's not always going to be, you know, 75 and breezy, which to me, 75, I'm like, oh, that's hot, but he's in California, I'm not. What I um, think is interesting about that line is that's very similar to what Cobra Kai teaches. Yeah, it's not always going to be how you want it. You're not always, you know, you got to anticipate everything. Who knows what's going to happen? I, I remember in the first season when he says to Aisha, she's like, I want to remind everyone this is my first day of class. And he's like, your enemies don't care what day it is. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was going to say, that was this whole slither thing. Yeah. yeah. You got yeah. back with sucker punched and everything, and that came up in the cafeteria fight. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's w w Which, there's some truth to that, um, to some extent, but Daniel doesn't seem like something he should be teaching. But, again, he's he's you can see he's kind of slipping into this preparing him for war thing and, and whatever's right. going to happen. But if you think about his very first moment of when he really broke out with the um, Miyagi-Do training, he had done all the chores, and then Miyagi just kind of started attacking him. He says, show me down the floor, whatever. But he, was, he suddenly started punching and kicking him, and Daniel's like, he had these instincts. He was like, he was like in shock. And and I know Josh would hate this example, but in the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Jaden Smith, the Karate Kid movie, which I love with Jackie Chan, Josh hates that movie. I love that movie. I thought it was good. You thought what? I thought it was good. I enjoyed you, it. You studied Kung Fu. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that when they're, that moment when they have to take the jacket on, take the jacket off, that exact same sequence, only the, the modernized version. Um, when Jackie Chan starts punching and kicking at Jaden Smith and he starts blocking, he looks at his hands like... What just happened? He's like in shock. It's done so well. Daniel's like that too, but he's just kind of has this clueless face. It's don't not, don't get me wrong. I, I I I am totally cool with him teaching them anticipation. I think that's cool. It's yeah. the attitude of uh, even though it's hot, doesn't matter. You never know when your enemies are going to attack. Yeah. That's that's more Cobra Kai than Miyagi do. Yeah. 
And you notice, and what, I like this, Daniel's, Daniel's sitting there wearing sh cut off sweat shorts. Yeah. He's wearing the same outfit when they go into the freezer later. They're all wearing their cold stuff, but he's not like cowering about it and everything. He, they're wearing their same clothes when they go in the freezer. But I, I like that. I like that that learning anticipation because it takes Dimitri by shock as well when he did, has his little hit later on. Which um, is but cool. He has one successful moment and, and <laughs> in this episode. It yeah. shows that he's building uh, some success a little bit, but he's still, it's not like he's perfect all of a sudden now. He's, yes. I really yeah. like his growth as uh, in the martial arts. This is a much more realistic. Natural and real, yeah. It's a subtle thing. It's not just instantly, you know. It just yeah. instantly clicks and you're basically a black belt. That, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> like not really Daniel. true at all. Not really, Daniel. I mean, that's not fair to say. When you see him fighting no, the that, that, I'd say that's pretty accurate for Daniel, Miguel. Uh, um, maybe even Hawk. Like, for, there's Miguel. people in martial arts for like ten years, and they lose to Daniel Larusso because he learned how to sweep or, or because um, he's the main character of the show. Is why. Yeah, oh, yeah. So. yeah for sure. <laughs> anyway, um, but I, I think yeah, it was a little. It was subtle with Daniel. I think that's. I think that's fair to say. He maybe not win the whole tournament. Um, maybe that's a little unrealistic, but he he took some good hits, just like Dimitri does. Isn't just like flawless, like you said. That's fair. Well, and he it, they did prolong his training sequence, where you're all like, he did that over a period of a few days. It seemed like at mm -hmm. least. So. And that's what annoyed Josh. Is Josh thought that was really he was over overused, Dimitri, in this episode. Um, but then you have Sam, so you have Sam and Rob before that whole thing happens. You have Sam and Robbie in the, when they get to the freezer, because they're complaining about how hot it is. They say, well, you want a cooler? Fine. So he takes them in the freezer. And then this sequence reminds me of the scene in um, um, The Big Bang Theory where Sheldon, where they're planning for their Arctic um, uh, experiment where they're going to be up there for yeah, a third. that's right. <laughs> he takes them in the freezer to at the, um, the Cheesecake Factory to learn a little, how to use their skills. Yeah. It's really awesome scene. Well, that's what this reminded me of only not comedic but you have sam and robbie in the center and sam's the one in the center and she blocks a couple of kids and then robbie's number is called and he takes a few punches and my thing is like how how long are they supposed to fight because he, he kicks and punches and then she gets around and they, they pivot and then they're on the opposite sides and he takes a few more swings and she kicks until she kicks him i'm like are they supposed to keep going until until one's out of commission i couldn't figure that out it was just like not like just a couple hits and go retreat um, not like Batman Begins, where, where he has the League of Shadows when he's walking through and he can't find Ra's al Ghul. Right. That's the example. And he's he, a couple hits and poof, they vanish. But anyway, yeah. um, that moment bothered me. Well, not bothered me. It was pretty well done. But they had their moment where they're like, they're in a block or a grapple right at the end and they and they couldn't, they didn't win. Or, or she, he could, or, or Robbie couldn't hit her. And they look at each other's eyes. And then they both breathe. And then the breath the air like kind of connects is it this episode that they have like a really weird awkward kiss at the beginning or is that the next episode it's the next episode oh, okay didn't... sorry I, I... No. <laughs> they had the marshmallow moment in the last episode this is the one where they're gonna kiss yeah and well it's, it's like at the beginning when they go to the dojo and they ha they're all like oh hey and they kiss and you're like that you don't seem like a natural couple at all but that's the <laughs> That's the, they haven't kissed yet. That's the next episode. Okay, okay. They're they're young actors, so whatever. But. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, whatever. I just don't like Robbie. <laughs> Not the actor. <laughs> so I'm like, don't kiss my Sam. He's, that's for Miguel. <laughs> so so protective of Sam. Yeah, for Miguel. Anyway, because I don't trust Rob. I don't trust Robbie. I never did. Anyway, so um, they have their moment. They lock eyes. He, you know, she has her brown eyes. He has his green eyes, whatever. And they go, oh the frost connects and there's like oh they're ready to kiss and they're just like just seeing it and they're dying for it not not awkward anymore like they had in the marshmallow moment the episode before anyway so they retreat and then dimitri gets in and and daniel had gone up to him he's like you're the most erotic person i've ever met and he says you are but this is going to work in your favor and everyone's talking about how cold he is he's like, that's not i see a twitching nerve and i see breath and i see a shiver he's like he's saying how these things can help you to counter and to be anticipating and he says dimitri's a neurotic this <laughs> is what's going to help him anticipate danger because he's going to be paranoid about it. And then he gets in there, takes a, he like takes a, a hit and then he's like, Dimitri, come on, you should do it. And he gets up there and then he blocks a kick and the music, it gets all exciting and loud and, and fast. And he's like, it's all celebratory. And they're all like, and he's all, yeah, I did it. And he calls the next number. He just gets <laughs> just, just slammed. <laughs> he lost focus. Your focus needs more focus. 
<laughs> focus needs more focus. Yeah. <laughs> Good right there. Uh, um, right. But that's important because right now, Daniel, who's not focused either, is missing phone calls from his wife. Picks it up, and he's supposed to be there at the special who, lunch. Who he said would be at the lunch. Yes, that's really bad. And then, and then, oh, this was really bad. I would have been mad at him, too. He he texts Ancho and says, yeah, sorry, I'm not going to be there. Even though he told the wife he's going to be at the lunch. And it's like, uh, this guy's about to quit his job. You you know, this really matters, and you're just going to text and dismiss him? Oh, man. That, right. That was... That was pretty harsh. Yeah. So now he's like, okay, hey, class is over. Because now he's got to bounce because now he's got damage control. Because um, now he's going to be on the couch, as we see. But he um, he takes off. But he gets back, talks to his wife. And she's, he's like, sorry, I've just been focusing on the kids. And she tells him, she says, whenever you focus on one thing. Isn't it right there? Or is it another point where she says, when you focus on one thing. Yeah, it was right there. When you focus on one thing, you lose focus on everything else. And that was kind of always his problem. The, the foresightness, but that's what Dimitri learned right there too. That's why that was kind of cool before that moment that he. Well, so he, what's funny he, about this is, at the beginning, Daniel says, "Oh, I'm Mister Balance," but he's not at all, and, and he. So he's like, that's my thing. Because he easily could have said to the, these kids, I, "I'm teaching for free, so I need to have very set times for teaching, and I can't let it go over those times because I need to maintain my life." Yeah. Um, well, he even says, "This is you're at karate camp." That's what she calls right. it. While you're gone to karate camp. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, and then it cuts. Miguel comes in and drops off the metal in the middle of the night. They have their... Oh, before that. Sorry, we have to express the kiss. Explain the kiss. Robbie's in his room. Sam comes in. Hey, that was a crazy day today. Yeah. And then she's he's like, what do you like better, hot or the heat or the cold? And she's like... <laughs> <laughs> And then he's like, that's not an option. I'm like, oh, I just want to slap the kid. And she's like, what about you? He's like, he steps towards her. He's like, I like the heat. And I'm like, oh, no. And I saw it coming anyway. How terrible was that compared to <laughs> Sam and Miguel's first kiss? Yes. That yeah, was so awesome. Even Tori in his first kiss. Where he, she's like, oh, hey, yeah. Move. I'm like, that's beautiful. But then it's just because I don't like Robbie. But he's like, yeah, I like the heat. But that was oh, like. I think I said this last episode or maybe two episodes ago. It's more Romeo and Juliet, super cheesy dialogue. Like I, it, it is, And the problem, with, what bothers me about that is not the acting or the writing. Maybe it works because I don't trust Robbie. It seems forced and manipulative and like he's putting on a show. Like if he was, if he did have an angle, that's the kind of stuff he would be saying. The stuff with Miguel and Sam and Miguel and Tori, that's natural dialogue and that's natural moments that they have when they kiss. This is, yeah, she came to him, but whatever. But, you know, and I'm not saying he has this angle. I, he really likes her. But it's, he, he's so shallow and hollow, you know, it, it seems. I don't know how to explain it. But I just, I hated that moment. I, had, I was creeped by that moment. And just because I'm creeped by him. Anyway, they have their kiss. And then every time they kiss after this, I'm like, I just don't like it. Um, but that, as I mentioned, their moment. And then um, later she goes to bed and knock on the door oh before she goes to bed knock on the door robbie gets the answer answers it and miguel's there returning the badge Rob, miguel didn't expect to see her there and then um he's takes it he's like what are you doing here am i here to fight just I, I had nothing to do with this and he gives it back and then robbie keeps it and i was talking to josh about this josh was like kind of frustrated like why did he keep it i was like he says it was i didn't want to robbie doesn't admit that miguel hey, dropped up. Me and you talked about this too i think in the overall review yeah because um, i kind of felt the same way as josh in this case i was like really? he's kind of a turd for with oh, yeah. that information yeah um it was kind of a, a jerk move but it's but that's why and he's a case like i'm not gonna give him any points because i don't want him to look any better or he's cleaned up at anything and he's making restitution i need him to look like a jerk so she thinks he's a jerk so because we just kissed or whatever and then she comes out who is that and he's like oh wrong wrong house I'm like who knocks at the door at like 10 o'clock at night she's like well that's weird he's like yeah nah. anyway let's kiss before we go to bed and then she goes up to me <laughs> but whatever that's that's uh, what it is okay now we're back to cobra kai and this is the end of the episode we got right to this part cobra kai or so johnny comes in he goes back and he sees crease and he talks to him again and he says, um, things need to change. This is where he's talking about the, the mantra here. 
And he says, uh, oh, so you're gonna, I can't remember what Kree says, but Johnny's like, no, Cobra Kai will always be badass. Part of my, my swearing, this is the exact right. line of the show. Um, but he says, well, this is the important part of Johnny's development. He says, Johnny says, there's the difference, there's a difference between me and that has, or the difference between no mercy and no honor. And he's seen that these kids are learning no honor. And that's not, and he saw that up at the camp. He said, this is, this, your approach is, is dangerous. And I'm, this is not what we're teaching them. Um, Chris looks at, but, and you notice this, this is really subtle. When he says that, Chris turns around, he looks at the picture, the photo of the, from him in the army, as if he's re remembering and connecting to something. And that's when he stands up and he says, or, or Johnny says, I'm responsible for these students. And he says, yeah, but I'm responsible for you. But I think it's relevant. I don't know if that was a, an accident or just the way Martin Cove stood up, but he st turns around and looks at the picture before he stands up. And he, remembering back, he learned in the military, like we talked about before, that unit, that's what that's what saved his life. Terry Silver was in there among, you have to look at your brotherhood and to survive in, yep. in Vietnam, right? I think that is why, and I never thought about it before, but I think that's why he has that picture. I don't think it's just, here's something that you remember from the movie, let's just put in here as an Easter egg. That picture in the dojo is relevant. I think that's what he remembers. Well, I think that motivates all of Kreese's thinking and actions basically through his whole life. Yeah. I mean, I really that... do. I think, I think it's, it's it helps him remember what drives him. That's that's his roots right there as who he is approaching his karate career, and the, okay. which is his life now. I don't think this is the best way to live your life, but a lot of people, the military, when they did their four years, or um, uh, as a missionary, when you did your two years, that's basically the most interesting experience you've had. So that shapes the rest of your life, right? Exactly. And I've heard general authorities in the church say, it's suggested, mine's sitting over there, to keep your name tag visible. Have it out where you see it so you can remember and connect with who you were and how that prepared you and made you in a way, you know, who you are now. Right. And hopefully that you're still similar and following the shape that you were becoming back then. That's that's really important. I think that's really great advice. And I think it's good that he has that picture I mean, to connect with something. But he's he's kind of drawing kind of the wrong attitude out of that. Maybe I don't. I mean, this that's his character. That's his character flaw, which makes him an awesome villain. And I, but I think there was something very specific in there. If you go back and watch it, he turns, looks at that as if he's like, okay, I can do this because he he felt the threat. Johnny's coming in saying, I'm challenging your policies, your doctrine, your lessons, and your agenda, and I'm kind of. Uh, you know, Johnny's never stood up to him like that before. He turns around, he sees that, he's like, okay, got to deal with this. Then he steps up, and that's when he kicks him out of the dojo. But he's not done. We know he's not defeated because that's not that's not the priest, and that's not how a stingray goes, like you said. But I think that was really subtle. I think that was really, I think that was deliberate how he saw that. And then Johnny picks up the picture. I think it's there, and he, like, sets it down. Doesn't trash or anything because he doesn't do that. But anyway, I, I think that's, that was a good uh, moment for, for Kreese and for Johnny. But he's like, no, I, I'm going to work in the in the gray area. But anyway, anything else on that episode you want to talk about? No, I think that pretty much. It's okay. Cause now we're moving on to a little, so that was kind of a little darker. So now we're going to step back in the next episode. Episode eight is Glory of Glory Love. Glory of Love. <laughs> it starts with an awesome sequence <laughs> where Johnny's dreaming. I thought he was having of a bad Carmen. Oh, oh my gosh. I had forgotten about this totally. <laughs> music video he has like with Carmen. Style music video and she's like in lingerie and he's like in a white gi. And he's <laughs> you know what's funny about this too is this is not culturally appropriate any at all today, right? Like this is like, oh, this is exploiting women. And it's like, yeah, but no, this this is what music videos were like. In the 80s. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> The three frames was three pictures that yeah. together. <laughs> it's like, and the music. I can't remember the song that was playing, but it was just like, oh, like, oh my gosh, this is like a, a rock video. Well, and I knew it from the beginning too. I was watching with my wife, and she's like, "What is happening?" And I'm like, "It's, it's like all over him. It's a dream." There's the. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wakes up. He's like smiling. You're and right. Then, and then it cuts to Daniel. He's on the couch. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Anyway, good sequence. Um, and that's so many, there are so many good those. Uh, what would you call it? contrast? They show the contrast all the yeah, time. We'll love it. I love it. But the first two episodes 
were like that. We would talk about that last season. Yeah. So it started with Johnny's day, how Johnny starts his day, and then Daniel how starts his day. life is. And the next episode is how great John or Daniel's life is until they all meet in the middle and you know, on the third. So anyway, um, so Daniel's on the couch. Mom comes in. So I know Josh loved when she showed up in the first season. Um, they have some good moments in this season too. Daniel's on. Okay, so Daniel's on the couch, wakes up his breakfast or whatever, and he's uh, just gonna he's going back because he's trying to fight back for his wife because she's pissed at him. Right. And I'm trying to call him his wife. I can't remember her name. Um, so he goes and he's like, he's by he's trying to do the, the typical things to, to win her back to get your the the win her favor, win her favor back. Yeah. I love that she doesn't buy it. That's not what she wants, right? She's like, no, this this is about you ditching me. This isn't about you did you said something wrong or whatever. Yeah. Like, You've been doing this for a while now, so this this needs an attitude change, not an apology. Right, right, and and that's it's really interesting because she she's the one that always calls him out. I love that, but he's yeah. like, this is not just a simple thing. This is behavioral, and this is something to change. It. And if I yeah go on lunch or or sushi or whatever, that's just a, a quick apology, a little band aid on it. But there's still something bigger going on, and you need to to figure this out and fix it. Um, but it's just good. It shows him, and it shows him kind of weak. And I like Daniel does have weaknesses. It's not just uh, just so awesome and does everything right. She has plenty of weaknesses, which makes him just more annoying. So does Johnny. Um, but then it comes back to Johnny. So we can all relate to Johnny's well, some of his weaknesses. I should. And Daniel, I, I'm in there. I don't relate yeah. to Daniel's problems. Oh, I'm yeah. not selling enough cars at the car dealership I own. I never have <laughs> that problem. Well, come on, but like his, it's not about, it's about that he's vacant from his marriage. And she says, I'm waking up every day in the last episode. She says, I wake up every day to, to an empty, to an empty bed, to, you know, by myself. It's not just not being at work, but she also doesn't feel like he, she, he's at home with That's her. That's true. I'm it's still in the honeymoon phase of my marriage, so <laughs> I, I haven't experienced that yet. But. Right, you're not there yet. Well, as a divorced man, <laughs> 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 I can relate to some of the faults he has in there. Some ways where I never, I never uh, pulled up and, and fixed certain things, and I'm not saying it's my fault. And we're not going to my divorce. I'm just <laughs> Sorry, I sent us to a weird tangent. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, definitely wasn't comparable to his uh, dealership issues at work. But anyway, uh, um, we come back to the dojo. So now Cobra Kai um, is sitting there training, and Johnny's walking in, and they're like, "Oh, should we?" And it's interesting. They're like, "Oh, do we need to wait for?" For Greg, Sensei, he, I can't remember what they called him. Sensei Kreese to be here. He's like, and he tells him Kreese will no longer be joining. Not gonna be here, yeah. And he says, um, the Cobra. He tells him the Cobra Kai Creed will make you strong. It'll make you formidable. But it'll also make you an a-hole. He doesn't say a-hole. Um, and I like that because that was something we were kind of pulling out of the first season when he was teaching him the no mercy stuff. And then he says. There, I mean, he looks at the wall and like the letters here are black and white, but you know what? In real life, there's a lot of gray, and it's in the gray areas is where John or John Lawrence's Cobra Kai does sometimes show mercy. Right. I was like, well, that is just the most awesome asterisk on the whole thing that he never admitted before, and right. he can let him go easy, Miguel. He's mad about her on uh, John or uh, uh, Robbie. He was upset about how they did in the first season, but how they won. But now he's like, hey, I need to define this and help them understand there are specifics. And it's not just about it being my kid. Because like even the badge of, uh, or the uh, the, uh, the the badge of, um, Yagi's badge, whatever, badge of honor, that that was another oh, example. Honor, yeah. So anyway. Well, so I, is- I remember watching this thinking, man, is he just going to paint over that and put, um, you know, strike I, thought, yeah, I thought he was going to leave off the bottom card, one. Have honor or something like that. Or just strike first, strike hard, end it. And you know? end it. Yeah. And he, because he was painting earlier, he's like, this needs a new coat. I thought that's what he was doing. Or at some point, he was talking about that. Yeah. Um, I like that. And then, but Miguel's in there talking to him. He's like, do you need to talk? We're going to talk about your friend or whatever. Um, maybe that was the last episode. But he comes in, and he's talking to him. And he's like, don't you need to be focusing on your girlfriend? He's like, oh, you noticed that? I think this is interesting. He only noticed that from exchanges of, of looks, glances at each other between um, Miguel and Tori. He's just, he noticed just because of how they talk and how they look. 
Now, Johnny is a player, or he was in his youth and everything. He knows how girls and guys are and how to look. And that, his old school, he comes up later in the episode. You know, this, it used to be he used to talk to girls and everything. This, all this digital stuff is totally foreign to him. But he could see that they were doing, they were involved, right? Then you have uh, Daniel, nearsighted Daniel, who it has Miguel and Sam right in front of him. Only those two for a long time. And Robbie and, and Sam. Happening. Yeah. Uh, Robbie and Sam. Robbie, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Robbie and Sam right under his nose. It's not that he needs to walk in on them kissing. They, he didn't, or Johnny didn't see them two kissing, but he sees it. Daniel doesn't. I thought that was really interesting. Daniel was just. I didn't little... notice that contrast. So that's totally true. I mean, I noticed them separately, but I didn't notice the contrast. Yeah. I... That I just think he's like he called him out. He's like, you need to take care yeah, of your girlfriend. And Daniel, like, and I can't remember when Daniel finds out. It's the well, and it makes sense because Daniel seems to be oblivious to anything other than Miyagi Do, right? So. <laughs> And that's and that's the point. This isn't a, a rip on him. It's just that it's just an interesting contrast, and it's also in character because Johnny is a, a guy. He's a, 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 a prowler. You know, he well, was. And I, he cares about Miguel too, right? Like in this season, their relationship isn't quite as solid as the last season. It's a little. We were building a foundation in the first season. Right, um, but uh, still, he cares about Miguel a lot. So yeah. Um, I just thought that I, I just picked that up the second time walking, watching through. I was like, "That's interesting that he know he saw that happening under his nose, and Daniel didn't. And Daniel didn't have any other students for a long time that he should have really seen, especially when they pull the pose in the in the circle in the last episode and they're breathing, just staring at each other. I'm like, okay. Anyway, um, so Miguel looking out for for Johnny um, talks to him about a dating app. <laughs> He's like, "You want an app?" He's like, "Yeah, of course I do." He's like, "What's an app?" <laughs> so they don't specify if it's tinder or whatever but um they get on a on an app later on he's like i'll help you set up your profile he's like okay so what's you're looking for he's like wait super hot babes i should have known the answer to that and he's like okay what are your likes <laughs> he's oh like, man muscle cars martial arts and iron eagle and iron eagle too <laughs> what's funny is that I, I i wasn't on tinder i was on um mutual the lds version yeah but that was fairly close to my list like yeah. I, i'm like <laughs> action done, movies martial life. arts uh move damn, damn movies <laughs> <laughs> and, and shockingly i got ghosted a lot so it's fine amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't do well on Tinder or anything. That's not my thing. I don't. I have a hard time. I don't. I know a couple, uh, an LDS couple that got married from Tinder. I was really surprised. Like, oh, I mean, I've heard a lot of success stories from it. I've met some amazing girls who are good friends of mine from Tinder. Yeah. I had a girl I was dating for a long time. Really good relationship. Uh, out of it. In Colorado, Tinder is not a dating app. It's more of a hookup app. Okay. Uh, yeah. When, yeah. Absolutely. A lot of that here too. Anyway, yeah. Um, but he said they were talking about his likes, and then he's like, "Why aren't you texting this down?" <laughs> <laughs> his love how disconnected Johnny is. I want a whole series. Uh... Um, but anyway, he's he gets frustrated, and, and Johnny's like, "You know, it, it used to be so much easier. You used to go into a bar, you used to bump into her, not too hard, not too soft, or whatever, and you like apologize and ask her to buy you a beer. And then you talk to each other. And that comes up later on when a girl bumps into him at the bar, yeah. and then they start talking, getting it off." Um, but that's, it's just, it's just cool watching that because there's something to that. There's something to that. And we're actually taught, we're, we're taught by the general authorities of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, that the digital devices and everything are, are a good thing and they help us stay informed and connected and they're a great tool for us. But they're also a distraction, especially when it comes, they talk about dating and they talk about interacting with people that you want to talk to people in person, call them on the phone instead of texting, but talk to them in person. Because hearing your voice, that's how you actually communicate and get to know people and people looking up. And I work in the restaurant industry and I see people all the time, groups of people at a table, all of them staring at their phones. No one will talk to each other. Yeah. This is actually something I talked to my neighbor yesterday for the first time. Really? That's... But I've lived here for nine months and I talked to them for the first time. And I... And... <laughs> It used to be you knew all of your neighbors, mm -hmm. you know, you know, uh, you could just go over and visit them on like a Sunday afternoon and they would be like, yeah, come in. Let's all hang out as a family like that used to be a thing. Right. Now, now I literally know one. I've talked to one of my neighbors and they were high at the time. So <laughs> for, for what that's worth. 
everyone's paranoid, everyone's standoffish, and everyone's just worried that everyone else is just kind of either they're weird or they're trying to sell or they're dangerous or they want to get to know them, they want to expose themselves. But a lot of it is just people are just awkward socially talking to people, just not able to just have a radio. They're, they're, they're used to being on their phone all the time. Exactly. And there's, so there's something to Johnny's um, being um, a little hesitant. It's, and it's not because of this moral compass and this like determination. Like that's not the right way to do it. He's just saying it was so much easier. And yeah, back then when people were comfortable talking to each other, it's easier. It's a lot easier. And some people, it's, it's you have a little protection to talk behind a, an avatar and you have a little more confidence and that's where cyberbullying and a lot of that and hating and online people, have, you know, years from now when they find this video and they hate me or whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever that comes, that's that's where that, uh, that, um, that courage comes from, is from hiding behind a, a computer. But right. there's something about getting to know someone, talking to someone, and having chemistry on a first date or, or meeting someone for the first time that Johnny's onto it, that that's an ex a really good principle. It used to be so much easier talking about buying beer, I'm not saying that necessarily, but you know, to talk to them, just go up to someone and meet them. Anyway. Well, I even feel like dating is so complicated nowadays. There's actually been studies on that too. Like it's really difficult. And I've talked to a few divorced people too, who say it's even harder as a divorced person because on top of the normal stuff, you have all the divorce drama uh, with everything too. Yeah. I see I, I, when I was dating still texting, I, I used to describe texting as um, slowly losing a game of chess. That's how I felt texting girls. That's, that's how yeah. bad it felt. Yeah. Okay. I get <laughs> right? <laughs> like, because you're like, uh, have I waited enough time to text? Am I going to seem too crazy? If I text them, then they don't respond for 14 hours yeah. and then they respond back. What does that mean? Like, and I, you, yeah. and they, you have they, to think they, way they, too much about it. Yeah. And you've already lost at that point, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. There's, it's a whole world. We could do a long discussion on, on uh, not just that. <laughs> But Johnny gets into it really quickly. <laughs> he's like, well, he thinks it. He, once he sees the girls and it's easy yeah. for him to swipe, he's like, oh, hot, hot. Uh. How much can you learn about someone from a picture? Like, oh, she's hot. <laughs> no, 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 the 10 foot pole. Move the mole and we'll talk. Actually, actually, yes. <laughs> so good. Anyway, so Miguel's trying to help him uh, get dressed so he can, so he's like, I'll have to help you to uh, get some clothes too. Meanwhile, he has in mind that he's going to be going to this 80s themed uh, date with uh, Tori. So he goes and he raids Johnny's, uh, his, uh, um, his closet. He's like, do you have any distressed jeans? He's like, I have some old jeans, if, that, if that's what, is that you, what you mean. Oh my gosh. That is such a little subtle jab against millennials that I love. <laughs> I love it. Um, but that's where he finds a jacket. I didn't catch that the first time. He's like, oh, it's a cool jacket. Can I borrow this? Yeah, I whatever. You look at the chicks. Um, but that's the jacket that he had in the first one and when he was on the beach sequence in the opening of the opening. Well, several times, but he's red and black, kind of the thriller jacket, but not exactly. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cool that they brought that back in, that he still has it. And I, and yeah, and Miguel wears it and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. And he shows it, but I didn't even catch up on it, catch it the first time. Um, anyway, so then it goes to a montage of Johnny going out on these dates and who knows how long this is supposed to take. Um, but he goes out with a couple Such, of So good too, because this is entertaining it's related to his overall arc with carmen yes uh, and it has a connection to season one which makes the world feel real because he ends up dating the one lady or, or one of the ladies he runs into that he went and put the, all the tv for in the first yeah. episode yeah like there's just so many good things about this montage and this yeah. scene in general that yeah it's just really good and we forgot to point out that earlier in the episode, he or in the beginning, when he left his apartment after he had his dream about Carmen, he goes out and Carmen's coming home. I think he was even going over to talk to her. He's going to go night. over to talk to her, yeah. And Carmen comes home from with a guy and kisses the guy and introduces him. She's like, Isn't he so funny? I was so mad at that. Not like I didn't know where they were going to take the whole thing, so I, I, I'm happy with how it ended up at the end of the episode. But I was all like, ah, oh, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's uh, it was frustrating, and you see the disappointment he had. He's like, oh, whatever. And and that's you know he's liked her for a while. They've hinted at this for a while since the first season, and he hasn't struck first. And this is maybe one. Doesn't the grandma say something? Does she say something in the first? She, season? Yeah, she was all about. It. She or was the second about season. In the first season. Um, his first season. Okay. Um, I remember exactly what it was. Yeah, she was kind of. Uh, 
if I remember right. Anyway, but he didn't strike first. Someone else is there, and he just came off of this retreat where he heard from Bobby or who, or Tommy that he, you know, didn't ask Ali out, and then he struck first. That's where the conference. So I'm like, that's kind of interesting. So he goes on these dates, and that's why he's kind of disappointed. That's why he's out there, excited to date. And then, uh, yeah, he meets a couple of girls. He's talking about girls like checking her smartphone or her watch, and he's like, "Oh, I get, I get email on my smartphone." Oh my! <laughs> and then, um, yeah, then the one girl from the pilot comes in. And he's like, "I didn't say you're a B. I said you're acting. You're being. <laughs> you're acting. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, oh, and people like that. He's like, yeah. <laughs> "I love it." Anyway, and then some girl comes up and bumps him, and then she and they she does the thing he said. <laughs> Yeah. yeah i'm like oh that's awesome and she's kind of cute and then sits down and they're sitting there talking about how this is how this is so much easier than how and all this digital stuff and she's done with apps and everything um and they have a regular conversation they're getting to know each other. johnny's liking her meanwhile he sees the dude that kissed carmen at the beginning sitting here at the bar now i kind of thought this was a little overdone because that guy was not that good looking didn't seem that charming and he just sees some girl walk by and he checks out her butt as she goes. And then he, they go and they, they talk in the back of the bar. And then a couple of scenes later, it shows he's like just kind of kissing her in the back. I'm like, this guy's not that suave and that awesome, man. Because she was pretty hot for him. Yeah. It was a little too far. I mean, I see him flirty, maybe like push her hair behind her ear or something like that. I can see maybe something that made him like, hey, this is romantic and sets Johnny off. But it was a little too much that she just starts to kiss. Whatever. I don't spend a lot of time hey. Yeah, I, I agree. I just they had to sell it quickly and move on. Yeah. There, yeah. There, there's so much going on in these episodes. There's a lot of that where there, it's little things. Some are better than others, but it's like, oh, we have to sell it quickly. And, yeah. And I was and whatever. It's not a huge crit criticism. Yeah. It's just come on, that's a little much. The guy's not that cool. He has the accent though. <laughs> and women dig accents, so there is yeah. that. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, get a hotter guy if you're gonna pull try and pull that off. But anyway, so Johnny's having a good time and he gets up when he's, when the guy's like gonna, when he goes out to the bathroom. I can't remember what triggers that, but the guy leaves. He's like, I gotta go. Oh no, cause he starts, he overhears them talking about Carmen. Yeah, 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 she's, she's yeah. not worth a long term relationship. Yeah. He's a... So now Johnny's pissed and then he gets up and then she's like, do you want my number? He doesn't even care. He leaves the money for, to pay for drinks, whatever. And he follows the guy outside and he like hits him <laughs> and he's like, um, you know, you're well, gonna... and he says what I, I've always said to dump her before you go doing crap like that. At least tell her it's over. Never talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. He see, he got, like, okay, I'll ghost her. He's like, I don't know what that means, but just leave her alone or whatever. Yeah. It's a cool moment for Johnny because this is him using his martial arts. I and mean, every time he's used martial arts in this entire series, it's always for good reasons. He's doing something noble. And even though Johnny or Daniel challenged him the first time he, in the first season, like, oh, you're beating up kids in the strip mall. Every time he's fought someone in the show, it's been self-defense or defending someone else. That's what I love about Johnny. He's awesome. Miyag or uh, Daniel has used his martial arts to kick a cup of tea, or kick a cup of tea, and to to piss off another car salesman, and then beat up the bullies that were fighting Miguel or Robbie. Robbie. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so anyway, Johnny's had some awesome. I, sorry, I love Johnny. <laughs> this is the man. Anyway, um, so he. Hits a guy, defends Carmen. He goes back, and then he's and he finally asks her out. He said, he's, "She's like, what if you want me to?" Or, or he, she's like, "What are you asking me?" Out? He's like, "What if I am?" He's like, "You deserve someone who's going to be there." And I like that a lot. Um, meanwhile, Robbie and Sam go on their little '80s date, and he's dressed as uh, Ducky. Is it Ducky from? I didn't watch these movies. I love the um, Breakfast Club and some of those right. movies, but. I didn't watch, I can't remember, I've seen either 16 Candles or Pretty in Pink. I don't remember which one it was. I only saw it once, I can barely remember it. Yeah, so, same with me. I, I knew he was referencing, but I I, I don't know. Yeah. So, anyway, even though you're 80s. No, 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 we should do the dirty dancing thing with Robbie. Yeah, I love those movies. They were great. <laughs> yeah. I watched them all the time. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. Okay. And <laughs> she's dressed up and, um, and they go to the skating rink where they're having this eighties night. And then bam, there is Miguel bam. and uh, Tori looks awesome. And, um, they meet Miguel kind of a, a little jerk movie. He's introduced her or, or uh, sorry, Tori 
And she's like, how do you guys know each other? He's like, oh, she's in Cobra Kai. Doesn't say we're dating. Doesn't say we're... She's, she's my girlfriend or anything. Yeah. She's in Cobra Kai, which is... Uh, I, I've been there. Not Cobra Kai, but I've been in that situation being addressed as, you know, a friend or whatever. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cold. Right. But, you're, one, you're sitting there wondering... It makes you question the relationship immediately. Yeah. But yeah. It's like, are you ashamed of me? Is it that you're ashamed of me or you just have stronger feelings for that person? It's, it kind of sucks. And then I can... Yeah. Anyway... But Tori, not backing down because you have fight for every inch. That's her philosophy, which is awesome. And she turns, kisses him right in front of her. And then she's like, I gotta go back to work, babe. And she kisses him and then just rolls off. That's one of the things you like about Tori. She's pretty uh, straightforward. Awesome. Yeah. And that's how Miguel was in the first place. She's fighting for what she wants. Miguel had to fight for what he wanted. That's how he got Sam in the first place. So, you know, I appreciate that. And I love that Sam didn't try and rub it back in and kiss Robbie. That, that would happen in a regular sitcom. Um, but Miguel uh, just kind of was a little embarrassed because he doesn't want to hurt her feelings because he's just, you know, sensitive to everyone. And then um, they just go on. They're roller, they're hanging out. And then Robbie is just kind of, and he, was, he didn't try and go, you know, try and go macho and get in Miguel's face or anything. I like that. And I like that there wasn't a conversation about the, the metal that for him to say something right there, trying to score points for Sam right there in front of Robbie. Um, so they're, they, he, they're both just cool. I like how Robbie and Miguel both behave right here. Back off. Sam didn't try and prove anything with with, with him. But everyone knows that now there's this uh, this some angle or square, love square. Right. <laughs> All the cards are out on the table now. Everyone knows who's dating who. Um, and this will come up later on the beach. So, or in the beach house party. Anyway, so they go off and then um, I don't remember anything else was really relevant until Sam... Yeah, so Miguel goes and talks to Sam, and he's just saying, I just want to clear the air. Apparently, that's not going to work. I don't remember why she was so bent out of shape about it. Um, well, I think she's her, she was really upset internally because uh, she still has feelings for Miguel, but she doesn't want yeah. to admit it. But also, like, that this is the kind of girl that he's with, because all Sam knows about her is that she's a thief, and she's getting right. and she's skanky and stuff. She's like, this is the kind of girl you're with, so he's like, She's saying, like, you haven't changed. You know, you're, you're just going off the deep end now. That's why she's frustrated. He's like, I just want to clear the air. Apparently, that's not going to happen. And then uh, he goes, and then she walks by. Or Tori comes up behind, knocks Sam, and then... Uh, so here's what's interesting about this moment. Yeah, yeah. sorry. You can finish no. describing the scene. Well, that's it. And then Sam goes up, and she fights back and goes up, and the stunt double <laughs> goes and does the cool point. <laughs> <laughs> the sweet roller skates by a bench look cool. Not criticizing it, but just went and did a cool sweep. Got up in the sand, like, Oop. and but then he comes up and kicks them out. I have mixed feelings about those two fighting each other. I, I don't really like it because I like both Sam and Tori, and I don't want them to dislike each other. But um, if Mr. Miyagi was there, he would have told Sam, "Don't do that." But, yes. but oh, Daniel yeah. Larusso isn't teaching him that. He's not saying. He does say it's only self-defense, but then he's teaching him all this stuff, and it's like, no, you, what you really need to be saying is don't escalate fights, ever. You don't escalate fights. If someone attacks you, defend yourself. But something like that, it's like, oh, that was stupid, but you shouldn't have done anything. You, you and you know why Daniel doesn't have that on his mind? Because look what he did on Halloween back in the party with the skeletons. Right. Hit that fight. He went, or Johnny's in there smoking weed in the bathroom, and Daniel goes up, puts the hose over there for nothing, no reason. Just puts the hose in there, turns on while he runs out. And just because, just because Allie made a comment, she's like, I just hope those guys get what's, what's coming to him, right. whatever. It's coming they, around. Yeah, <laughs> he did it just to impress her. I'm like, that was. Uh, see, Daniel is just that's that. Why he wouldn't be the one to train them that because he hasn't learned that lesson. You see that from the first season with the billboards. And all that stuff but anyway yeah i agree with you escalating is the is the issue there i don't i don't have the problem with them fighting each other because i like it i, I like both characters i don't want them to fight but i don't, have I, don't I don't have a problem like from a, a story perspective it's just that i like both characters i don't want them to fight yeah i do too it's kind of like when you're getting at the end of the game of thrones and you know it was the episode where you have uh Tyrion with the with uh, Daenerys' troops and the dragons attacking right. the train, and you're, and then you see Jamie sitting there getting just his army destroyed. You're like, I don't know who to root for right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. 
I want Sam to defend herself, and I want Tori not to get beat up. It's like, I don't know. It's really interesting. Right? I can't wait to see what happens with this, this uh, tr- that, the trio there, because I hope right. I hope I'm just kicked out of the group now. Um, you know, not the story, but anyway. Okay, well, that, that kind of wraps up. I don't think there's anything else that really happened there. Um, Johnny's on the date, and then... Oh, and then Daniel makes up with his girlfriend. And he says it and with his girlfriend with, with his wife. I, I, I thought that was a really good <laughs> transition and cut. And it kind of shows like <laughs> you get to see some of their early relationships. So yeah. I actually, that was a flashback I appreciated seeing. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't give that its moment. Maybe it's, I don't like Daniel, but they, uh, yeah, they do. And it shows back where she was pregnant. And he's looking the photo on with mom. That was a good moment where he's looking at the pictures. Like, and he says, mom sits down. He's like, what are you doing? Just going through memory lane or whatever. And he goes, she's, he's like, she's like, oh, I don't know why you haven't like digitized them yet. And he's like, oh, I will. But there's just something about these old pictures, you know? And that's true. There's something about having pictures than, than just digital images. And that's kind of neat. That was I have one. so many pictures on my phone, but the pictures I like the most are the ones that my, like my wife has framed or that I framed and put up those. There's a difference. Yeah. yeah there is a difference. Yeah. I agree with that. So that was a cool moment. It has nothing to do with the rest of the story. It was just kind of a cool touch. Just kind of t- it, it, it goes back to the bind with the, the contrast between millennials and our generation, whatever we're called. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it's just kind of, there's there's a gap and there's things that are good and bad in both places. Johnny's evolving to the good things about the modern world, but there's things not to be, that shouldn't be lost about the whole world, you know? So it's kind of cool little things that they throw in like that. But he talks about the dojo. I don't remember what he says. Or he was talking to, to his wife and he says, opening the dojo made me feel like he was back in my life again, talking about um, um, Miyagi. Now, I didn't really like that because, or I didn't think it really fit because I haven't seen in the series other than him talking to the Fisher dude, how he's had any thought about Miyagi in any of this. The first season he talked to the, he talked to the graveyard or the, at the cemetery. He looked at the picture. He looked at the, you know, the medals. He was setting up the, the dojo again. There's several times where it kind of reflected on where you could feel like he was thinking about Miyagi. They haven't really shown much of that at all in this season other than that fisherman moment. But for him to say, opening the dojo felt like he was back in my life again, I, it just didn't collect or connect for me. Did you feel? No, no, I, I, I didn't really feel that. But I, I just, what, what, I, I just ended up with questions in my mind about the nature of their relationship over the years. But I, I, I didn't feel like it wasn't true. But I did wonder, like, did, because Miyagi had no money, and when did Daniel become successful? Was Daniel successful before Miyagi passed away? Um, if so, was he staying with him, or was he taking care of him? Or... Well, I would say so because he had the shop when Sam was born. Because she was, he was pregnant with Sam, I think, in that picture. So, you know, ten plus years, and and it had the. We'd have to look, but it had the year on the on of the, the of when he passed away. And I don't think it was more than ten years before. I don't know. We'll research that. I'm gonna research that, and then we'll. We'll follow up with the in the next episode. Um, with the because next I, I I guess that kind of relates to what you're saying in that. Well, what was you know did they have that type of relationship? Because it doesn't seem like it. And I'm kind of like, yeah. What well, what was their relationship? And how did Miyagi survive post Roddy Kid Three? Uh, yeah. And even how did even Daniel from what we in the movies, it didn't. I mean, I don't know. It just it just felt like this like, tried to be a clever line to that he's connected with Miyagi, but what has he been doing this entire season that has anything to do with anything Miyagi's taught him other than he feels like he might be getting in over his head. He is teaching the kids in the dojo. Yeah. But that's about it. What he's teaching him, I mean, he's teaching him Miyagi do karate in terms of the physical techniques, but in terms of the philosophy, he's way off. Yeah. Sorry, got to correct. There was the other moment where he, where Robbie asked about the rules of karate and, he, and it had to show us Dan, or uh, Miyagi saying rule number one. Well, but that more connects the audience. I don't even know if that connects um, Daniel to me. Yeah. yeah. Dan, Daniel has his little smirk like, oh, he was so witty. I'm going to say the exact same thing. Let's focus on rule number one. <laughs> anyway. I do. What, what I will say, though, with this season is I'm glad Daniel's learning he needs to be his own person and his wife is helping him with that. We'll see how that goes next season, where she's banned all the karate. So I'll I'll give you that. Daniel Daniel is not doesn't seem like he's trying so hard to emulate Miyagi like he did in the first season. 
following around the train when they went up to the retreat doing when he was having um robbie on the stump you know during the, yeah you know, and they're like and he was trying to say witty things you can tell he was just trying so hard to be like miyagi in the first season this season is a lot less of that so i think that that makes him less annoying to me and that's why i kind of like daniel a little bit more in the season um He's a little nearsighted, but you know what? There's a lot of things that are building up around that are over his head a little bit. And that, but that's the character of Daniel, and that's awesome. That's awesome. The first he was, he was I'm like, annoying. I'm like, come on, you're, you're hovering around this kid trying to show him how to use a stapler in a karate way. I'm like, this, just leave him alone. <laughs> this is just too much. And he's like, and he's like, oh, this is the part I love. And he's like, I'm not training anything. And he turns his wife, he's like, oh, here's my favorite part. It's like, <laughs> and she, all right. even she says, you're enjoying this. Yeah, you're enjoying this too much. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, Glory of Love. Johnny is now seeing the Glory of Love. Um, he was having some fun dating, but now he's going back to Carmen, who's the real target. And uh, Johnny, or Daniel, got uh, got, got closed, or got back, uh, patched everything up with his wife. So that's the Glory of Love. And Sam is uh, crying out in the parking lot with Robbie, and Miguel is uh, saying, hey, my chick can fight back. Well, actually... <laughs> The first punch so that wasn't really a good example but anyway everyone's just happy and confused <laughs> the teenagers are confused the adults well the nice thing that they've done is they've set up the last two episodes really well because now they're like okay we finally got to all the conflicts you now understand all the conflicts yeah. things and are emotional now the second episode is going to escalate all the conflicts to the finale which is a pretty crazy so finale, nine and so. explodes in ten yep yeah and we'll talk about that on our next episode. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed our discussion. Again, share, like, subscribe, whatever. But uh, if you have anything that we missed or if you think I'm uh, too critical or if there's things that uh, you want to share, put them in the comments below. But anything else you want to say, Zach? Nope. Thanks, guys. It was good to be here again. Yep. Yeah, we'll catch you next time for episodes 10 and 9. Not in that order. Let's talk about 9, then let's talk about 10. And then do a wrap up and talk about predictions. But anyway, thanks for watching Saints on Cinema. We'll see you next time.